Expand your vocabulary with our core 2000 words ebook. It's free and packed with essential expressions that you'll use on a daily basis. Start building your vocabulary today. Click the link in the description below to download your free Spanish ebook before it's gone. Welcome to Can Do Spanish by SpanishPod101.com. Hola a todos. Soy Víctor Trejo. Hi everyone, I'm Víctor Trejo. In this lesson, you'll learn how to tell someone where you're from in Spanish. This is Mark Lee, and he's on a plane to Mexico. Ángel Salazar Almonte, a passenger sitting next to him, asks, Where are you from? ¿De dónde es usted? Listen to the conversation and focus on Mark's response. Note, the speakers in this conversation use formal Spanish. Ready? ¿De dónde es usted? Soy de Nueva York. Once more with the English translation. ¿De dónde es usted? Where are you from? Soy de Nueva York. I'm from New York. Let's take a closer look at the conversation. Do you remember how Angel Salazar asks, Where are you from? ¿De dónde es usted? Let's start with Usted. A formal word meaning you. Usted. Usted. Before Usted. Is. Es. This literally means is, but it translates as are, as in are you when using formal Spanish. Es. Es. Note. Es. Comes from the verb. Ser. Meaning to be. Ser. Together. Es. Usted. Are you when using formal Spanish? Es usted. Before this is... Donde? Where? Donde? Donde? And at the beginning is... De. Meaning from in this context. De. De. Altogether. De donde es usted? Where are you from? When using formal Spanish. ¿De dónde es usted? Remember this question. You'll hear it again later in this lesson. Now, let's take a closer look at the response. Do you remember how Mark Lee says, I'm from New York? Soy de Nueva York. First is, Soy. I am. Soy. Soy. Note. Soy. Is a shortened form of. Yo soy. I am. In Spanish, the. Yo. I is usually omitted. Soy. Is from the verb. Ser. Meaning to be. Ser. Next is. De. From, in this context. De. Last is the city. Nueva York. New York. Nueva York. Nueva York. Altogether. Soy de Nueva York. I'm from New York. Soy de Nueva York. The pattern is. Soy de city name. I'm from city name. Soy de city name. To use this pattern, simply replace the city name placeholder with the name of your hometown. Imagine you're from Sydney. In Spanish, it's Sydney. 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 Say, I'm from Sydney. Ready?
Soy de Sydney. I'm from Sydney. Soy de Sydney. In Spanish, there are basically two language registers. The formal register, which is used to address strangers or people we encounter in business settings, and the informal register, which is used to talk to friends, family, and people younger than yourself. When addressing a single person, there are two options. Usted, when using the formal register, and tú, when using the informal register. Since this lesson's dialogue is between two strangers meeting for the first time, we will be using the formal register in this lesson. Let's look at some examples. Listen and repeat, or speak along with the native speakers. Soy de Nueva York. Soy de Nueva York. Soy de Guadalajara. Soy de Guadalajara. Soy de Seattle. Soy de Seattle. Soy de Londres. Soy de Londres. Soy de Veracruz. Soy de Veracruz. Soy australiana. Soy australiana. Did you notice how the last speaker omits the de and replaces a city name with australiana? Soy australiana. I'm Australian. Soy australiana. Instead of de plus the city name placeholder, she uses an adjective for her nationality. This pattern is Soy nationality. I'm nationality. Soy nationality. In Mia Martin's case, she uses a feminine adjective to describe herself. Soy australiana. If the speaker were a male from Australia, he would use a masculine adjective. Australiano. To describe himself. Soy australiano. I'm Australian. Soy australiano. You should be aware of this pattern, but for this lesson, we'll use the pattern Soy de city name. I'm from city name. Soy de city name. Let's review the key vocabulary. Guadalajara. 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 Seattle. 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 Londres. London. Londres. Londres. Veracruz. 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 Let's review. Respond to the prompts by speaking aloud. Then repeat after me, focusing on pronunciation. Ready? Do you remember how to say New York? Nueva York. Nueva York. And the word meaning from? De. De. Now, do you remember how Mark says, I'm from New York? Soy de Nueva York. Soy de Nueva York. Do you remember how to say where? 
donde, donde, and the formal word for you, usted, usted. Do you remember how Angel Salazar asks, where are you from? ¿De dónde es usted? ¿De dónde es usted? Do you remember how to say London? Londres. Londres. And the word for Seattle? Seattle. Seattle. Do you remember the word for Veracruz? Veracruz. Veracruz. Let's practice. Imagine you're Jack Jones from London. Respond to Angel's question. Ready? ¿De dónde es usted? Soy de Londres. Listen again and repeat. Soy de Londres. Soy de Londres. Let's try another. Imagine you're Emma Lopez from Seattle. Ready? ¿De dónde es usted? Soy de Seattle. Listen again and repeat. Soy de Seattle. Soy de Seattle. Let's try one more. Imagine you're Victor Trejo from Veracruz. Ready? ¿De dónde es usted? Soy de Veracruz. Listen again and repeat. Soy de Veracruz. Soy de Veracruz. You can also use the pattern with states and countries. For example, Soy de México. I'm from Mexico. Now, here's what you can do to cement this conversation in your head. Review the conversation with our dialogue tool and lesson transcripts. Study the key words and phrases with our spaced repetition flashcards. Review the key grammar and cultural tips inside the lesson notes. And test yourself with our assessment tests. So click the link in the description right now and sign up for your free lifetime account to access our CanDo course. Hasta la próxima. See you next time. If you're tired of knowing and speaking the language at a basic level and want to express yourself fluently just like native speakers, then you'll need to learn grammar. The problem? It can be tricky to learn. But don't worry, in this guide you'll discover how to learn and master grammar with the Grammar Bank. 1. Where to get all of the grammar explanations you'll ever need. 2. The best way to learn grammar that's right for your level. And three, how to expose yourself to real examples until the rules become natural to you with a study tool called the Grammar Bank inside of our learning program. But first, if you don't yet have access to our program, sign up for a free lifetime account right now. Just click the link in the description. First, what is the Grammar Bank? The Grammar Bank is like a grammar dictionary, except online. It's a database of the must-know grammar rules and explanations that makes it easy to look up specific rules and learn them. Look for it in the top menu of our site. 2. How do you learn grammar with it? The best way to learn grammar is not to just study rules, 
but to learn in context and hear the grammar used in real life. And that's exactly how you learn with our lessons. You learn a quick conversation and hear how the grammar rules are used within that conversation. Three, what if you come across grammar that you're not familiar with? Or what if you want to review a specific rule without going back to redo a lesson? That's where the grammar bank comes in. You can look up grammar rules and get the explanations, examples, and links to lessons where we cover these rules. You can also sort grammar by learning level. So if you're an absolute beginner and want to make sure you know all of the absolute beginner grammar rules, you can do just that with the grammar bank. You can also sort the rules by spelling, category, and lesson series. And if you want to get used to the grammar patterns so that you can use them in conversation and become fluent, the best way is to expose yourself to examples as much as possible. Grammar is hard at first, but gets easy once you get used to it with enough exposure. Be sure to access the related lessons inside the grammar bank and listen to the native conversations that use the rule as much as possible. So, if you want to become fluent and speak perfectly, you'll need grammar. Take advantage of the grammar bank inside of our learning program. But if you don't yet have access, sign up for a free lifetime account right now. Just click the link in the description to sign up. Hola a todos, soy Lucia. Hi everybody, I'm Lucia. Welcome to SpanishPod101.com, Español en 3 minutos, the fastest, easiest, and most fun way to learn Spanish. In the last lesson, we learned how to show thanks by saying gracias. In this lesson, we will learn some of the most common greetings used in Spanish. ¿Están listos? Are you ready? Empecemos, let's start. The most used informal greeting is hola. Hola. Hola means hi or hello. We can use it in formal and informal situations at any time of day. It's very convenient. Hola. Now, let's look at some greetings that are used at certain times of day. First is good morning. Good morning in Spanish is buenos días. Buenos días. Buenos días literally means good day, but we use it to mean good morning. During the day, we say buenas tardes. Buenas tardes. Buenas tardes means good afternoon. This can be used all day as long as it's light outside. Again, buenas tardes. When it starts to get dark, you can switch to this. Buenas noches. Buenas noches. Buenas noches means good evening or good night, depending on the situation. If you're greeting someone in the evening, it means good evening. If you're speaking to someone before you go to sleep, it means good night. Again, that's buenas noches. Now, you can greet people in many different ways in Spanish. Let's review them all again. As a general greeting, hola. In the morning, buenos días. In the afternoon or during the day, buenas tardes. In the evening or at night, buenas noches. Pretty easy, right? Now it's time for Lucia's insights. If you're not sure which greeting is right to use, buenos días, buenas tardes, or buenas noches, just remember that all that can be used at any time of day. During the next lesson, you will learn the meaning of habla inglés. Do you already know it? In our next lesson, you will learn this phrase and more. Hasta la próxima. See you then. Hola a todos, soy Lucía. Hi everybody, I'm Lucía. Welcome to SpanishPod101.com. Español en tres minutos. The fastest, easiest, and most fun way to learn Spanish. In the last lesson, we learned the most common greeting in Spanish. Do you remember them? In this lesson, we are going to learn a very useful phrase. Do you speak English? If you're in a situation where you need help in English, this phrase can be a lifesaver. Here is a formal way to say it. Habla inglés? Habla inglés? Again, this means, do you speak English? 
The word habla is a form of the verb hablar, which means to speak. This is the formal way to say you speak. Hablar is known as a AR verb because it ends in AR. Most AR verbs conjugate in a similar way. To learn how to properly conjugate AR verbs, like hablar, please check out our Absolute Beginner series on SpanishPod101.com. Now, let's make this sentence informal. This is done by adding an S to the end of habla. When we do that, we get hablas. All together, hablas inglés, hablas inglés. This is the informal way to ask, do you speak English? The responses you receive could be one of these three. Sí, hablo inglés. Yes, I speak English. Sí, hablo inglés. Sí, hablo un poco. Yes, I speak a little. Sí, hablo un poco. No, no hablo inglés. No, I don't speak English. No hablo inglés. In all of this, hablo means I speak. In the last one, we have no hablo, which is the negative form. It means I don't speak. Now it's time for Lucia's insights. If you want to ask about a different language, just change the word English. Here are some language names to get you started. Italiano for Italian. Russo for Russian. Frances for French. Alemán for German. Do you know how to say I'm sorry in Spanish? In the next lesson, you will learn how to apologize and more. Hasta la próxima. See you then. Want to master grammar so you can speak properly, express yourself better, and understand more? In this video, I'll show you how to master grammar with our lessons and learning program. Let's begin. Number one, listen to the lesson conversations and explanations. In every lesson, you learn a conversation. Then, our teachers break down every word and grammar rule. So you're actually learning grammar rules in the context of conversations, and you can easily see how they're used. Once you're done, review the conversation again and again to remember what you've learned. Number two, read the bonus explanations and tutorials. With the lesson notes, you get extra grammar explanations and examples that are not presented in the lesson. After you're done with the lesson, read the lesson notes for extra review. You can even save them as PDFs so that you can access them anytime. Number three, leave a comment on the lesson. Once you've learned a grammar point, be sure to use it. Leave a comment in the comment section. Write some example sentences for practice. Our teachers will review your comment and give you feedback. Number four, unlock even more grammar lessons. If you want to find all of the grammar lessons available, visit our lesson library. Under category, choose grammar. You'll get all of the pathways and lessons dedicated to helping you learn and master sentence patterns and grammar points. So if you're ready to finally learn a new language the fast, fun, and easy way, sign up for your free lifetime account by clicking on the link in the description. Signing up takes less than 30 seconds, and you'll start speaking from your very first lesson. If you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share it with anyone who's trying to learn a new language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. I'll see you next time. Bye! Rosa here, welcome to Ask a Teacher, where I'll answer some of your most common Spanish questions. The question for this lesson is, how do you make sentences negative in Spanish? You can make the most basic negative sentence just by adding no before the verb. For example, hoy es lunes is today is Monday. Hoy no es lunes is today is not Monday. Here are some other common negative words. Nada meaning nothing. Nadie meaning nobody. Ninguno or ninguna meaning no one. Nunca and jamás meaning never. 
and tampoco meaning neither. You can also use these words on their own or with no. So you can say nadie habla, which means no one speaks, but you could also say no habla nadie, which means the same thing. No hay nada en el refrigerador means I have nothing in the refrigerator. Unlike in English, double negatives are standard and acceptable, so you can use more than one negative word in a sentence. Actually, in Spanish, you never mix positive and negative words, so it's common to have two, three, or even four negative words in the same sentence. For example, in English we say, Maria doesn't want anything. In Spanish we would say, Maria no quiere nada. Remember, nada means nothing, so the direct translation into English would be something like, Maria doesn't want nothing. You can even say, Maria no quiere nada nunca, for Maria never wants anything, which uses three negative words. Ningún changes form depending on the noun it's attached to. For masculine nouns, you say ningún. And for example, no tengo ningún libro would be I don't have any books. If you use ningún without using the masculine noun, you use ninguno. Say you're responding to the question, ¿Tienes algún libro? Which is, do you have any books? You would say, no, no tengo ninguno. No, I don't have any. For feminine nouns, you use ninguna in both situations. Not so bad, right? If you have any more questions, please leave a comment below and I'll try to answer them. ¡Hasta luego! Hi everybody, Rosa here. Welcome to As a Teacher, where I'll answer some of your most common Spanish questions. The question for this lesson is How can I use the pronoun SE reciprocally? In this lesson, we are going to focus on another common and important usage of the pronoun SE. Okay, let's go! We can see the reciprocal pronoun SE when we have two or more subjects who are doing the same action to each other. Here, SE would function as the direct object, but will be the indirect object if there's another direct object that is formally expressed. Let's take, for example, Carlos y Juan se pelean, meaning Carlos and Juan fight with each other. Here, SE acts as the direct object because the thing that they are fighting is themselves. Another example would be, los amigos se escriben cartas, literally meaning, the friends write letters among them. Here, the direct object is cartas, letters, which is the thing that they are writing, and se acts as the indirect object as it's to whom the action goes. A helpful tip to identify this kind of se is to add el uno al otro, meaning to each other, El uno con el otro, literally meaning one with the other, mutuamente meaning mutually, or reciprocamente meaning reciprocally, to the end of the sentence. If the sentence's meaning doesn't change, we need to use reciprocal C. How was this lesson? Pretty interesting, right? Do you have any more questions? Please leave them in the comments below and I'll try to answer them. See you later! ¡Hasta luego! Learning to carry a conversation is vital to mastery of any language. Even beginners can quickly learn conversational language well enough to carry on real conversations with native speakers. Of course, beginners won't be able to carry a conversation the same way they could in their native language. But just knowing a few tips, like which questions to ask to keep a conversation going, are all you need to speak and interact with real native speakers. 
Before we get to specific suggestions, let's first take a closer look at how having real conversations in your target language is so vital to your mastery of the language. Communicating with other people is the very point of language, and conversation comes easily in our native tongue. For beginners, or anyone learning a new language, conversations aren't easy at all, and even simple greetings can be intimidating and awkward. Nothing kills a conversation faster than long periods of awkward silence, so you need practice and specific strategies to avoid them. When you know what to say to keep a conversation going, communication becomes much easier, and you make a better impression on your listener. Nothing will help you learn to speak a language faster and truly master the language than having real conversations with native speakers. Conversations quickly expose you to slang, cultural expressions, and vocabulary that force you to absorb and assimilate information faster than any educational setting. And that's a great thing. But how can you possibly have real conversations with real people if you're just starting out? Here are three proven methods that even beginners can quickly use to learn conversational language to make a great impression and avoid awkward silences. First, ask questions to keep a conversation going. For beginners and even more advanced speakers, the key is to ask questions to keep a conversation going. Of course, they can't be just random questions or else you may confuse the listener. But by memorizing a few key questions and the appropriate time to use them, you can easily carry a conversation with minimal vocabulary or experience. And remember, the more conversations you have, the quicker you will learn and master the language. Second, learn core vocabulary terms as quickly as possible. You don't need to memorize thousands of words to learn conversational language. In fact, with just a couple hundred words, you could have a very basic conversation. And by learning maybe 1,000 to 2,000 words, you could carry a conversation with a native speaker about current events, order in restaurants, and even get directions. To help you get started with this, check out our 2,000 common words, also known as our core list. These 2,000 words are all you need to learn to speak fluently and carry a conversation with a native speaker. Third, study video or audio lessons that you can play and replay again and again. If you want to know how to carry on a conversation, then you need exposure to native speakers, and the more, the better. Studying video or audio lessons is ideal because they provide contextualized learning in your native language, and you can play them again and again until you achieve mastery. Our instructors have created more than 2,500 video and audio lessons that you can play over and over. And the best part is, they don't just teach you vocabulary and grammar. They are designed to help you learn to speak and teach you practical everyday topics like shopping, ordering, and more. Although it may seem intimidating for a beginner, the truth is that it's very easy to learn conversational language. Just learn a few core vocabulary terms and which questions to ask to keep a conversation going. Our language learning program has the world's largest online collection of video and audio lessons by real instructors, plus tons of advanced tools to help you learn to speak and carry on a conversation quickly. Just a little practice and exposure to real conversations or lessons is all it really takes. So, if you're ready to finally learn a new language the fast, fun, and easy way, sign up for your free lifetime account by clicking on the link in the description. Signing up takes less than 30 seconds, and you'll start speaking from your very first lesson. If you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a new language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. I'll see you next time. Bye! Hi everybody, Rosa here. Welcome to Asa Teacher, where I'll answer some of your most common Spanish questions. The question for this lesson is, why is the adjective sometimes written before the noun in Spanish? In Spanish, adjectives are usually placed after the noun, but sometimes adjectives precede the noun. When that happens, some adjectives change their meaning. If we use these adjectives before the noun, the meaning is objective or descriptive. When it's placed after the noun, as usual, the meaning is subjective or connotative. Let's go through some examples so you can learn how to use adjectives before nouns correctly in Spanish. Let's take the adjective pobre, meaning poor. If you put the word pobre before the noun men, which is hombre, 
then the speaker could be implying that the pobre hombre, poor man, is someone he or she pities or someone who deserves sympathy. However, if you switch them, the phrase becomes hombre pobre. This could quite literally mean a man who has no money. Let's do another example with the adjective viejo, meaning old. If you add viejo to the word friend, which is amigo, you will get the phrase viejo amigo, old friend. In this case, viejo represents the length of time the speaker has been friends with that person. The same way you would say old friend in English. However, if you were to reverse the phrase and say amigo viejo, then you would be literally talking about a friend who is elderly. An important point to remember is that if the adjective is talking about the quality of a noun that's always the same, the position of the adjective doesn't change the meaning. For example, oscura noche or noche oscura both mean dark night, because night is always dark. The same way that fría nieve or nieve fría both mean cold snow, because snow is always cold. How was this lesson? Pretty interesting, right? Do you have any more questions? Please leave them in the comments below and I'll try to answer them. Hasta luego! See you soon! Hi everybody, Rosa here and welcome to Ask a Teacher, where I'll answer some of your most common Spanish questions. The question for this lesson is, when do you use the conjunction U instead of O? First, let's go over some background information on how to use O. O is a conjunction in Spanish that means OR. It's a conjunción coordinada disyuntiva. OR Disjunctive Coordinating Conjunction. That means it connects two different sentences and it used to give contrast or connect contrary opinions. An example of contrast would be Sal a trabajar ahora o no llegarás a tiempo. Meaning, go to work now or you are not going to be on time. Here, that means if part A, go to work, doesn't happen, Part B, you are not going to be there on time, will happen. An example of connecting contrary opinions would be ¿Qué quieres de postre? ¿Helado o fruta? Meaning, what do you want for dessert? Ice cream or fruit? This is the most common use of O. Now, on to the question for this lesson. O changes to U when OR precedes a word that begins with an O sound. This includes H and O together because H is silent in Spanish. Let's go through some examples so you can learn when to use U instead of O. First up, Más vale que vengas a la hora u otra persona te quitará el sitio, meaning You better come on time or another person is going to take your place. Here, the word otra, another, begins with an O sound. Therefore, we change O to U. Another example would be Puede utilizar esta mesa para jardín u hogar. Meaning, you can use this table for the garden or home. So why do the words change? That's easy, because it's easier to pronounce. How was this lesson? Pretty interesting, right? Do you have any more questions? Leave them in the comments below and I'll try to answer them. Hasta luego, see you later! Expand your vocabulary with our core 2000 words ebook. It's free and packed with essential expressions that you'll use on a daily basis. Start building your vocabulary today. Click the link in the description below to download your free Spanish ebook before it's gone.